Good morning, everybody. I'm Aaron Mesh, the news editor of Willamette Week, and I'm here today with Andrew Jankowski. He is a freelance journalist, sometimes a contributor to WW, sometimes to other newspapers we won't name. And recently, he was in jail, which is an unfortunately common occurrence for reporters on the streets of Portland. Uh, on July 17, in the wee hours of the morning, Andrew was arrested by the Portland Police Bureau. Andrew, hi. Hi, Aaron. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, can you tell me when you realized you were going to be arrested by the cops? Yeah, it was definitely after um, they had shoved me to the ground um, when they were ripping uh, the phone out of my hand when I was screaming media. Um, and that is to the best of my recollection. I understand that um, trauma makes some things a little difficult. I, very, I remember screaming media and I remember screaming my having my phone ripped out my hand and my wrist twisted. So I believe those things happen together at the same time. It was when they got me on my feet and were leading me away effectively that I realized like even after being identified as a journalist by bystanders and even with the restraining order being effect, when I, you know, when they, when I was identifying myself as a member of the press and was still led away, I knew that it was, there was nothing I could do. So walk me through the minutes before that happened. You're standing on the middle of Burnside and 47th, right? Not exactly. Um, I know we had passed the, there is a Lutheran church um, on East Burnside, a little bit west of um, 47th. So I know we had made it to that point. Um, I don't know how wide the blocks are on Burnside, um, but we had made it to that point and I know that they uh, had bull rushed us. And this was the second time that um, police had sort of ordered protesters to leave and that done this sort of thing where they come out of the precinct, all kind of line up in formation and march down the street until you leave. There's like no other choice. Um, well, hang on. A lot of our viewers may not be familiar yet with the term bull rushing, even though at this point, yes. like, a lot of these terms are becoming unfortunately familiar to everybody. Uh, walk me through what, or run me through what a bull rush is. Ah, yeah, good, good verbiage. Um, yeah, a bull rush is effectively when the police just charge at protesters, um, and their intent is to. We've seen it in videos where they will shove protesters to the ground and make arrests. Um, we've seen it where they've been. They've done this with medics, um, and in, in my case, they did it with me, a journalist, a very clearly identified journalist. Um, <laughs> What were you doing at the moment the cop blindsided you? I was I was doing my job. That's all I can really uh, say. I was documenting the police um, bull rushing on protesters with myself kind of in the crowd there. Um, it was one of those things where you kind of like go back and look at your choices. And I had seen some of my colleagues more on the sideline and I was like, well, what if I get like a slightly different shot? And that's what happens. Um, I had kind of had to weigh the choice of if I ran faster, I would have trampled someone and I wasn't going to do that. Everyone in front of me was smaller. Um, everyone has, uh, I believe we all have, you know, first amendment rights to be there, but in terms of protections and an active restraining order, I felt that I had more protection. Um, so therefore I weighed that I was not going to harm somebody. Um, and that's what happened. You mentioned the restraining order. There was a restraining order in place against the Portland Police Bureau using force on journalists the night that they used force on you. And now was, the, there's a restraining order in place against federal officers against them uh, using force on journalists. Do these restraining orders have any effect, do you think? If it does, I haven't seen it. I know that several of my colleagues have reported being shot at despite having very clearly identified press helmets or press... Um, and media, you know, whether it's a patch, whether it's a sticker, um, they're very clearly identified in a way that is different from protesters. Um, I myself, I have arguably one of the most visible uh, media passes because I'm going out of my way to try and make sure that there's no way that I can be misconstrued as like somebody else. Um, I really had weighed the choice of like, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, no journalist wants to be seen and like become part of the story. And so I was like, well, am I making myself too visible? Turns out it didn't make a difference as far as me getting arrested. Um, and it's like, I have the words freelance. I mean, I can show you, I have it right here. Um, I, yeah, I have, um, let's see. 
Yeah, so I have, uh, I had, the black part was my name and Twitter handle, so that it's like, if you need to know if you can trust me or whatever, like, there I am. Um, but I've had to block that out due to recent events, but you can see here, uh, freelance journalist, I can even tilt that closer if you're having trouble. What injuries do you have? Oh, um, I, I mean, I definitely have some road burn on my hand um, and my kind of like hip area. Um, I still to this point have trouble um, lying on my side. And in terms of like my right hand and wrist where I was holding my phone and where they were um, twisting my wrist to get my phone out of my hand, um, I'm having a point where it's kind of hard to write, kind of hard to type, like hold a pen. Like that night I had a real difficulty uh, signing my name on the forms. Um, it's fortunate that it's getting better, but I am also trying to make some time to go to a doctor and like just kind of get some things on on file. But um, yeah, it was one of those things again where if I hadn't had um, padding on or anything like that, it would have been much worse. How long were you in lockup? Uh, about nine hours. Um, from what I have gathered from records, and that's the thing, some of this I'm still like piecing together and need to like um, do some more research on my own arrest, but um, I was, arrested at either um, 1250 or 1255 a.m. Um, on Friday the 17th and about nine hours later, I think that's nine hours later, about 945 a.m. I was released. Um, so that's, yeah, I'm not great at math, but um, you know, I've heard some people on the internet say that I was very quickly released. And I'll tell you that is longer than an entire day of work. So <laughs> that's not quick. Were you charged with anything? I have two charges that, to my knowledge, are still pending. Um, they are uh, disorderly conduct two, which I'm not sure what the degrees you know there mean. But the other one is interfering with a peace officer, and I, I don't know what I was uh, doing to interfere with a peace officer, uh, especially when I was shoved by two of them. Um, so I, again, I have no idea what that could be. So I guess I've I've spoken with uh, an attorney. I haven't retained counsel, but I've been told that I can talk about these things. Um, and yeah, it's just one of those things where I I understand that I've been charged, but in terms of what I did that warrants those charges, I I, do, I did not do anything. There's just no other way to word well, it. You did something, you got in their way. I arguably, but you know, that's one way to put it. The other way is I'm trying to comply, I'm trying to do everything I can, and then there's, Again, it's chaos. When they run at you and there's people in front of you, you can't tell who's who. It's a dark lit area. Um, the roads in Portland, as you know, um, could use some work in terms of their levelness, in terms of their quality. Um, and from, I remember moments like right before, there was like a flank of officers on the right side of where I was. It was almost like they were waiting. And it was just, I remember I'd seen that before, like when I've been by the Arlene Schnitzer Hall and they're just kind of waiting at the top of the hill on the left side, I've seen that before. Um, and I know of the tactic of cattling that we've seen before. Um, so again, it was like, I've, I was kind of aware of that. But again, you know, doing my best to, you know, just stay out of people's way, not be a subject, um, be ethical and do all that.